Well, I'm joined now by global events analyst Marco Vicenzinho. So, Marco, this show of force then that uh, Vladimir Putin put on today, it sort of harks back to the Soviet uh, Cold War era, doesn't it? Do you think it's an effort from uh, Vladimir Putin to show that Russia still have a strong military presence on the global stage? There is a strong element of that, but it's particularly, although we want to show it on the global stage, it's more a regional power as opposed to a global power. It's also, remember, it's a day of commemoration. 25 million people, uh, citizens of the former Soviet Union, died that day. Many obviously being Russian. Mm -hmm. Also, it's a day of national pride and unity. All nations have that to bring together their people for special events and special days. And also, there's a, a way to display one's alliances or friendships, alliances, we, we, more of it to display its friendships around the world. And once again, a display of its military prowess. Once again, it's not global, it's more regional. Sure. Uh, do you think that uh, Vladimir Putin will be bothered by the fact that um, the, many European leaders didn't turn up to the event today? I think he's accepted reality once he began the operation to last year in Crimea, now with the conflict in eastern Ukraine. It's not so much that it bothers him, it's something that he generally accepts mm -hmm. if you look 10 years ago at the at the at the same hall, the same anniversary but 10 years ago on the 60th anniversary of this day you had George W Bush attended president Jacques Chirac of France many West other other Western leaders but it shows you how within 10 years much has changed sure uh, when it comes to how uh, Vladimir Putin is trying to sort of maneuver his uh, standing on the the global stage at the moment and his sort of allegiance to the new big players like Xi Jinping from China, who is right next to him at the event today, uh, the president of India, Jacob Zuma of South Africa, and also his other allies as well, Cuba and Venezuela. The leaders of those countries were there too. Um, what do you think it says about the way he's trying to position himself by using those new players and the, the, the allies he already has sure. in a big show? Well, some of them are traditional allies, and if you go one by one, if you look, for example, with China, the relationship between China and Russia has ebbed and flowed. After when the communists won power in 1949, obviously they were allied with, with with the Soviet Union at the time, but they fell apart in the 60s. Actually, skirmish, border wars and skirmishes took place. There was a deep split between the two. It was only after, when, after 1980, Chinese foreign policy went from an ideological foreign policy in 1949 to 1979, and then from the 80 onwards, the reforms of Deng Xiaoping, Chinese foreign policy has become a lot more pragmatic. So from the Russian perspective, they want to show the world that they have friends, particularly the war in the world's emerging economies. Sure. And then, but from a Russian, Chinese perspective, they're looking more at commercial interests, and they've secured secured in the past year some of the best uh, oil and energy deals with Russia. And on the other front, you also have Venezuela, which is, has many domestic problems at home. That only changed with, with Chavez, with the close relationship, particularly on the military front, that the Chinese, the Russians sell many weapons to the Chinese. Cuba is obviously one that goes back to the Cold War. And you have South Africa, because during the time of the, the Cold War and during the time of apartheid, the Soviet Union was a big back over the Afri African National Congress. And with India also, India during the, and, China, and Russia during the time of the Cold War had very close relations. Russians take their nationalism and their pride uh, very seriously. How do you think the events of today uh, will have been felt by the public? It, it's, a, it's a way to reaffirm. Russians have a, a deep sense of uh, historical, how you they, they view themselves within a deep historical context uh, going back centuries. They see themselves as basically the standard bearers of Christian orthodoxy, the standard bearers of the Slavic peoples. And also it's not just that they see themselves in terms of a nation. They see themselves, many, many of them, and particularly Putin, and the, Russia, and the leadership in the Kremlin see Russia in terms of a great civilization. And that's a major difference from just plain nationalism. Um, when uh, World War II was fought, um, the allies of, of Russia, the Soviet Union, were um, Britain, the US and France. They weren't there today. Um, is that all purely down to this recent conflict in Ukraine? It's been evolving over the recent years, but it's culminated in the Ukraine conflict, mm -hmm. the takeover of Crimea and the current conflict in eastern Ukraine. If you look, obviously there were allies during the Second World War, but during the Cold War there was a parting. For nearly 45 years, there were enemies, the Soviet bloc and the countries of the West. And then, basically, uh, with the fall of the Soviet Union, there was an improvement of relationships in the 90s, the early 2000s. But in recent, and then you also saw close close ties between NATO and Russia with many programs like Partnership for Peace. Uh, but what happened is that in recent years, there's been an unfolding, and it's a lot of it comes down to mutual threat perceptions and the one needs to overcome them, and that's what that's a huge gap, the threat perceptions. Uh, can relationships with uh, Putin ever recover? Do you think that the, the West, 
particularly the West, uh, can, can get on to sort of friendly terms with him again? Once again, I'll use that word that I used before. It's overcoming mutual threat perceptions, and that's mm -hmm. very much a psychological, but also factual. If you look, for example, in recent years, the West sees Russia in many ways as being an aggressor in recent years. They look at the situation, what happened in Georgia, what you call frozen conflicts. Mm -hmm. And these frozen conflicts have played a part into this. And also in recent times, as relations have, have soured, you also see incursions. Uh, Russian military incursions, aerial, by air, by sea, and also by land, many particular areas like in the Baltic Sea, and many of the neighbors, uh, the former, former like the Baltic states, they're now members of the European Union and NATO, and many former Soviet states have fear, there's a, there's a real fear of Russia. And a lot of what's taking place in eastern Ukraine, this takeover, I mean, and the takeover in Crimea, plays very much into that. It's, it's, it, it's enforced sense of threat perception on both sides. Mm. And when we look at Vladimir Putin's style, um, he's not just an ultra-nationalist. Uh, uh, how much of his rhetoric and his behavior do you think uh, reflects sort of his, his style of leadership? And do you think it draws comparisons to the Stalin era? If you look at Stalin, this is, and uh, Putin, it's like the classic cult of personality. If you go through Russian history also, there's always been that strong figure back in the days of the empire was mm. the czar. But in terms of Russia today and Putin, how he sees himself and how he sees Russia, he will do whatever is necessary to secure Russian interest, be it economic, commercial, diplomatic, and also Russian-speaking peoples throughout areas of the former Soviet Union. He did so in Georgia. He's doing it now in eastern Ukraine. I see. And when we look at some of the, uh, the, the tanks and, you know, the, the marching sort of process which, you, which we saw today, how much do you think um, sort of the, the discipline within that um, was part of his show of, you know, might and force and, and, and you know, his, his effort on the world to show that Russia are trying to be a, a big military presence as well as a, a global sort of diplomatic presence? Too? There's an external and internal element. Externally, it's exactly to do so, to show that Russia is still a military power. Mm -hmm. But once again, I'll say, it will like to think in global terms, but in reality, it's a regional power. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of internal, you have, uh, you look at what happened, the fall of the Soviet Union, and then you had the chaos of the 1990s on the Yeltsin. Many Russians look upon that era as, as you know, with great shame. And then you look at the, when Putin took power in late 99, early 2000, that began the reemergence of Russian stability, Russian pride, and he plays a lot upon that. So they see Russia today as a nation that's restored itself again. But once again, it's not on a global scale, it's on a regional scale. Marco Vincenzino, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you.